Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be caring for someone who could care less. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So if you were in or are in a healthy or stable relationship, there are some fundamental values and things that keep that relationship grounded. One would be commitment. Another would be fortitude. Another would be empowerment. Another would be wanting to be with that person and build them up and to be headed in the same direction or to be building that person up and helping them achieve their goals, their dreams, their aspirations, and vice versa. You see, in a healthy or stable relationship, you have two people who are learning about each other. They are giving insight and wisdom and sharing experiences and troubleshooting some of the pitfalls that may happen in each other's lives. They are a support system. There is no person keeping score. One of the two people is not in competition with the other. They want the best for that person. They wanna build them up and they wanna watch them grow. And hopefully these people build together and exactly that is how it should be. Now, if you flip it in a narcissistic relationship, that is not what you get. What you get is you get smoke and mirrors. You have a relationship built to the betterment of one person, which is and or was the narcissist to the detriment of you. You were giving to a fault. You were caring about the narcissist. You were perhaps being a people pleaser, a yes person. Maybe you did not have boundaries. Maybe you couldn't say no, the strongest word in the English language. And all these things that you did, you were fooled and manipulated by the narcissist. The narcissist was wearing a mask, most likely. They were tricking you and trapping you and they were future faking you and telling you that yes, in fact, they did love you and they did care about you and they wanted the best for you and let's do this, let's build a house, let's have children, let's raise, let's raise a family, let's create a business, let's do it in the future, let's keep on doing things like that, let's plan. Now, some of these things did come to fruition. Perhaps you married the narcissist or had children or went into business with them. But once one of those pivotal things and or all of those pivotal uh, experiences went, was, you, you went through, that's when the narcissist twisted the knife in you. That's when they knew that they had you. That's when they knew that you would be continuing to give to a fault because they didn't care about you and you did care about them. So I'm not gonna focus exclusively on the romantic interest. Maybe it's your mom, your dad, your aunt, uncle, sibling, coworker, neighbor, a friend of 10, 20, 30 years. Maybe it is your romantic interest, who knows? But these people, what they get you to do is to fall for the mask and to get you to care about them. And they know that they can play on your heartstrings. They know that you are an empath. They know that you're kind, you're loving, and that you do care about them. In these relationships, many times, it's like an anaconda who is trying to squeeze you and squeeze every last drop of your energy and your existence out of you. Because the more you try to give to the narcissist and that relationship, the tighter the grip that the anaconda slash narcissist has on you. This is why you were placed in the trauma bond. This is why you were in the devaluation stage for a long period of time because you did not have the wisdom. You didn't know what narcissism was. You didn't know that perhaps you fell in love with one or entered a friendship with them or that it was even your mom or dad. What you did know is you kept on caring about that person. You kept on caring that that person may change, that they could actually be a good person like you, that they could care about you and that they wanted your best interest at heart and other people's best interest at heart. We now know that the narcissist doesn't care about anybody but themselves. They don't care about their own family. They don't care about business relationships unless they can get one over on the business uh, relationship. They don't care about romantic interests. They interchange people the way that you breathe air. Anybody is replaceable in a narcissistic relationship. It's just a matter of time when the narcissist will end it or when you will wise up and perhaps you will exit the relationship. And there will be a big price to pay, I can assure you. The longer you are in these relationships, the more taxing, the more draining, the more manipulation, the more confusion and chaos you experience and the more of your resources get depleted. They, they become diminished and depleted. Your health takes a hit, your status takes a hit, your social circle is blown up left, right, and center. Wedges are being driven between you and your own children or stepchildren. It, it, uh, family members that you were you once had over to your house for Christmas, Thanksgiving, holidays, barbecues. These people all disappear like cockroaches at midnight when you turn the light switch on in the kitchen. 
And the reason why is many of those people also were toxic people, maybe not a narcissist, but what they did do is they supported the narcissist, maybe even your own ex-spouse. These people knew that your former ex was a toxic person. Did they know the terms, the definitions, the glossary? Did they know what narcissism was? Maybe, but I doubt it. They probably just had seen that rodeo or that song and dance play around a few more times and then it was your turn to get up off the chair and enter the relationship and you thought you found the best thing since sliced bread. But that's why perhaps you entered the relationship with them because they had you believe in the mask. They had you believe in their words. They were pushing you and they knew that if they could get you to care about them, maybe even have you fall in love with them, that they could manipulate you and take anything from you that they wanted because you did not know what you were up against. And I will tell you this, if you did fall in love with the narcissist, it is a very challenging thing to break. It is extremely hard, but you will do it. You will do it in time, in your time. The whole point of that part of the video is to let you know the narcissist never cared about you. They don't care about the new supply. They only care about what people provide for them. They care about what people will do for them. They want walking apologies. They want unpaid helpers. They want sounding boards. They want someone to be there when they open the front door so they can pepper them with abuse. And then every once in a while, reinforce the abuse with a little bit of a mini love bomb or, or euphoric stage. This is the narcissistic cycle. It goes around and around. And if for a period of time you were trapped in it, you were existing in the narcissistic fog. You were not living your life. You were an extension of the narcissist. You were doing what they wanted, when they wanted, and with whom they wanted you to do it with. You would drop whatever you were doing at a moment's notice when the cell phone would ring or when you would get a text to see if it was the narcissist because you were on call 24 seven. And back then you knew it, but you did not know any better. Again, because you did not know what you were up against. The, in the narcissistic relationship, really simple terms, boiling it down, there are two people and one of them cares about the other one, which usually, which was you. You care about the narcissist immensely, or you did. And the narcissist does not and or did not care about you ever. And they knew that. So they knew the more they pushed your buttons, the more they wound you up, the more they were around and then disappeared or took you high and then took you low or pushed you away or pulled you back in, the more they kept you on that roller coaster of emotions off kilter so you couldn't figure out who they were and so you were isolated from your support system and your friends and your hobbies and anything that mattered to you before you met the narcissist, the longer they can extract your resources. But in the narcissistic relationship, you need to remember this. There are two people. One does not care at all, and the other one cared way too much. That was you, that was me. Now, I am not suggesting that caring too much is not a good thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. If you have the ability to love and to accept love and be loved, you are a very special and important human being. That is something the narcissist cannot do. They cannot offer love, and they certainly cannot accept love. They look at love and empathy and kindness as weaknesses. That is why they try to trade places with you when you are in these relationships. There is an energetic exchange that takes place when you are in these relationships. Your beautiful bright light, your abundance, everything that makes you you is taken from you and you trade places with the narcissist. You go down into their low vibrational quagmire state and they steal your beautiful energy. That is why every time you communicate or would communicate with the narcissist, you would feel your energy get zapped, get drained because the narcissist was consuming your energy. They were blaming you for things you did or didn't do. They were ghosting you. They were gaslighting you. They were throwing rage fits on you. They were giving you the silent treatment. When you try to have an adult conversation, they would stonewall you. They would blame shift you. They would do anything they could, but they did not want to listen to a word that you wanted to say about building that relationship up or what you wanted to do if it did not benefit them. Now, of course, in between, the relationship, you would get periods of time where it seemed like the narcissist was actually trying and that they did care about you. Now that's a mini euphoric slash love bomb stage. It's when they put their guard down, they got their supply for the day, week, month, and they are now coming back closer to you because remember the narcissist needs to keep you or needed to keep you close to them. They did not want you discovering who they were. They did not want you spending time with people who were smart and wise or maybe could tip you off to what, you, what kind of relationship you were in. And there were people all around you, people that knew you from a lifetime and people, that, uh, relatively new acquaintances and coworkers and things, they were watching you and your behavior. They were watching you glow when you first met the narcissist. They were watching you disappear from their lives during the love bomb stage. They were watching you super happy. 
maybe gaining weight or losing weight or changing your appearance, your hairstyle, your clothes, because you are already being groomed and manipulated into being shaped to what the narcissist wanted. These people watched you change. Now, some of those people, maybe they knew what you were entering, but they couldn't say it because you wouldn't have listened to them if they did tell you what kind of relationship you were entering. Other people didn't know. They just thought, wow, you found the love of your life. I'm really happy for you. I'm really proud of you. God bless you. Go live your life. That's great. And then other people are toxic people themselves, and they watched you. They watched your life. They watched you, how you entered the relationship, and they watched your demise. They watched you go from thinking you're at the top of the world with the narcissist in that relationship, and then they watched you get discarded. And what did they do? They sat back and grabbed their popcorn and said, yep, it happened again. I cannot wait to see if this person picks themselves up, and I cannot wait to see who the narcissist traps next because this is an ongoing soap opera. The difference is this is your life. And those people who grab their popcorn, shame on them. Those people are either toxic themselves or they will have challenging days because we all have challenging days. But when you're caring for someone who could care less, that is what a narcissistic relationship is 100% in a nutshell. You are giving to a fault. You're putting this person high on the pedestal. You're doing everything you can to maintain the relationship even though you know around you it is falling apart because there are cracks in the armor. And the narcissist behavior is changing any which way the wind blows. And then you, you realize that there are strange people entering your house, maybe even when you're not home. You come home and there's a few people at your kitchen table talking with the narcissist and perhaps they're a little too close and they're of your sex and you're like, what's going on here? Who are these people? Oh, these are just high school friends. You know, I haven't, I haven't seen them in a while. We reconnected or this is a coworker. They just started the job with me and I wanted to show them the house or these are people who are gonna be putting renovations on the house or these are people that just moved in the neighborhood and I wanted to invite them over. You couldn't wrap your head around this because the narcissist cares about one person and it wasn't you, it was only themselves. And when you were being triangulated, like I just shared with that example and so many other times, you didn't know the definitions, you didn't know the terms and the glossary, you didn't know that this is how these people exist, this is how these people thrive, by throwing you under the bus, by having you doubting yourself, by having you lose your identity, by having you care about them and they don't care one bit about you. Throughout that whole relationship, I can assure you a few things. One. The narcissist had multiple sources of supply. It wasn't just you, whether you put a wedding ring on their finger or they put one on yours or not. They were constantly, and they still are, looking for replacements for the new supply. Nothing is ever stable in the narcissistic relationship. And you may say, well, Andrew, the, the narcissist I know, they've been married for 20, 30, 40 years. How is that possible? I'll tell you how it's possible. Very simply, either they married a narcissist, they married someone who was so beaten down and they're existing in the, in the narcissistic fog, and they don't think there are better days ahead, so they believe that that's just best for them. Or the narcissist had multiple sources of supply behind that person's back, maybe even in front of them, and the other person knew about it and just tolerated it or didn't know about it and just thought they married the love of their life. There are so many different layers of the onion to peel back there, but yes, the narcissist needs supply and they need built-in supply also. They can get this from a pet, from a child, from a romantic interest, from a friend. They can get it from a smartphone. They can get it from consuming content, they can get it from dating apps, they can get it from social media, they can get it from walking outside, they can get it from being on a plane, train, automobile, anywhere. The narcissist is all around you and you now understand that you escaped one of the most challenging toxic relationships known to humankind and you also know that you cared about somebody so deeply, perhaps even fell in love with them, that you did not want that relationship to end. But every narcissistic relationship has an expiration date. We now know that. That relationship was going to end one way or the other. That is just a fact. And now that you've come through the fire and risen through the ashes like a phoenix, you understand that that relationship that almost took you down for the count, the one where you were caring to a fault, caring so much and believing in love and believing that that person had your back and your best interest at heart, that, that escaping that and getting out of it and healing was the best thing you've ever done. Now, again, did you wanna go through that relationship? No. If the narcissist handed you a two-page report and told you, here's what I'm gonna to do to you, read it, and if you want to enter the relationship with me, sign on the dotted line and we will begin. If you don't, just go another way and I'll find somebody else to manipulate and to abuse and use and take advantage of. But they didn't do that. They entered that relationship possibly under false pretenses, most likely under the, the disguise that they were a kind, loving, caring person. Nothing, and I mean nothing, can be further from the truth. The narcissist does not care about anything or anyone, only what they can take from people and only what people do for them. That is why the narcissist cares about beach houses, about select parties, about events, 
about attending events, about not attending events, about being in social media, about pictures that they are or aren't in, about hiding their wedding rings, about who they're sitting next to in pictures, about who they're not including in the pictures. I'm sure you know what that means. About how many filters they use. The narcissist is on a constant quest for supply and they're always looking for that new shiny object, that new person to catapult them forward to a level higher than you could take them. Tough pill to swallow, I understand, but this is how the narcissist sees people. They look at people as opportunities. They look for people who are caring about them. They look for people to place in the trauma bond. They look for people who don't know their worth or don't have their value or don't know what they're up against. And all of these people, and at one point that was you, they all pay the price for being in the narcissistic relationship. They all have to find the wisdom, but not everybody does. Not everybody gets that needle in a haystack. Not everybody figures out what narcissism is and or was and how it affected them their lives for a period of time. You are one of the fortunate ones. You really need to take a deep breath and understand you found the wisdom. You have the craving. You are understanding that slowing your life down and caring about people that care about you is the path. No longer giving your empathy or energy or love or care or a thought to a person who does not care about you. And this video is not exclusive to narcissistic abuse. It can be for anybody. Maybe there's a relationship you're a part of and it's not a, a toxic relationship, but someone just flat out doesn't care and they're not changing. Well, I would suggest considering cutting ties with that person. You don't walk up to them and say, hey, I'm not gonna talk to you again. You slowly fade them away. You don't have to give them your energy or let them know what's going on. And if, in people, there are 8 billion people on the planet. If one person is not treating you properly, they just vetted themselves. They just weeded themselves out. They just showed you that they don't care. And if they don't care, there's no time for these people anymore. Go back to another uh, person out of the 8 billion and see if that person is going to care about you. The people that care about you, I will tell you right now, will be few and far between. But those people are the most valuable. And many times these people aren't your romantic interest and aren't your immediate family members. In other words, the people you were born into the family with, or maybe you were adopted if you were. Many times these are people that you meet along the way who are like-minded. They can see your beautiful abundance within you. They can see that you're a kind, loving person and they want to get close to you, not romantically, but friendship-wise. They want to grow with you. They want to learn about you. They want to be a part of your life. These are the beautiful people. These are most of the people in the community. These are the people that have conquered the narcissistic relationship. These are the people that we care about. The narcissist took and weaponized your caring and your love and empathy for them and they weaponized it against you. That relationship almost took you down for the count, but it didn't. We now need to understand, when you are in a relationship and one person cares about it more than the other, then the person who cares about it more has a lot to lose. That is why we understand and we need to know that where we place our attention is where we place our energy. And our attention and energy should go into something that fulfills us and something that is reciprocal, that is a like-minded, healthy, stable relationship, just the way I opened the video. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful, windy Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. And understand the message. Caring is a very important thing. If you care about somebody and you want to see them be built up and help them or be help them get across the bridge or want to see them succeed and do well, that's beautiful. That's what the narcissist doesn't want. The narcissist wants to take from people and they, they think that they're better than people and they don't want to see people succeed. That's not you. Understand the message. I love you all, God bless you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye guys. <laughs> it's not cold, but it's windy.